So you brought up radiation pneumonitis. Um, so, um, yes. So, so radiation pneumonitis was low in that study. So that was a nice surprise. Um, you know, there was not a higher incidence. Well, pneumonitis overall yeah. was low in the study, not a higher incidence. How are you sorting out for those patients who do have pneumonitis? What is the culprit? Was it you or was it your radiation oncology friend? Uh, how, how, how are you managing those patients? What are you doing? So I think you bring up a big point about the study. The, the patients were enrolled after chemoradiation. I think the people who had s significant toxicity probably never enrolled on the Pacific trial. In clinic, we see those people and we uh, have to manage them. Uh, I think generally the people uh, who we start on the druvolumab and then they get pneumonitis, it can be very tricky to determine whether it's the radiation or the druvolumab. Um, and so it can be problematic. And uh, I did put one person on steroids, and it turned out that she had PCP pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think we um, have to be very vigilant and not just assume it's pneumonitis in this uh, situation just because uh, it's sort of um, new, new uh, waters for us to tread in. So definitely something that patient probably didn't get better on steroids, which led to the bronx. So something to think about, if it, whether it's immune-related or radiation pneumonitis, Minus, they right. both respond to steroids. If they don't get better, get your pulmonologist involved straight away. Yeah, I think it uh, helps if you have an integrated system where you, the pulmonologists kind of know the lung cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Do your, do your pulmonologists see every patient who gets pneumonitis, or do you pick and choose? Do you manage it yourself? Sort of how you're at a big center, you've got multidisciplinary care. What should a doc in the community do? Do you send every patient in, or should you see how you're doing first? I generally try and see, manage it myself, and if the patient's getting symptomatically better, they sort of stay in my clinic, but if they're not improving like that patient, then I start sending them to the pulmonologist and saying, well, it, maybe it's something I'm missing, um, or an infectious etiology that I'm not covering, and that's when I uh, send them. And I generally, two to four weeks without an improvement, that's when I start to get a little bit more nervous and uh, try and get some more help. So Eddie, pneumonitis is not uncommon, and if a patient does get pneumonitis, are you gonna rechallenge them um, after that break from Duralumab? So I think it depends on, one obviously depends on the grade. Um, a high grade pneumonitis is going to be of greater concern than a lower grade. Um, and also, some of it's going to depend on, on a very subjective decision about whether I think this is radiation pneumonitis that, you know, that was just there or, or not. I think. The reality is that oftentimes we're going to be spooked in these patients who have uh, pneumonitis. We don't have a great marker for what pneumonitis is what, so um, I would generally use the same criteria that I would have used for restarting patients in the metastatic setting. Um, do, you know, is it a low enough grade that I think it's it's reasonable to to add it back on afterwards, with the additional. Um, sort of caveat that these patients, there are a subset of them that will have been cured. And so mm -hmm. someone, for instance, who maybe, you know, had a disease that might have been theoretically resectable, but, um, but for some reason the decision was not to resect, maybe has a better prognosis, that patient I might be less uh, willing to restart or rechallenge with the PD-1 or with the Dravalumab um, in this setting. Um, than I would be somebody who had bulk, bulky, you know, disease involving both uh, supraclavicular uh, lymph node stations as well as, you know, lymph nodes throughout the mediastinum. That person I have, you know, great confidence is likely to progress, and um, a rechallenge may make more sense in that setting. Yeah, yeah, you bring out a good point because we are going for cure in these patients, and luminitis can be a fairly debilitating illness that can impact quality of life.